All right, so I think we're going to go ahead and begin. Uh, Arnaud, Juan, can you uh, turn on your cameras, please? Hi, guys. Hi, thank you. Uh, hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on our webinar today uh, about our finance specialization. Uh, we'll be holding a Q&A session towards the end of the presentation, so we kindly ask that you save all your questions until after we finish. Okay, so uh, my name is Patrick Glasgow. I'm the Digital Marketing Manager uh, for the MBA program at HEC Paris, and uh, here with me today are two current students from our January 2019 intake, Juan and Arnaud, who will uh, be introducing themselves shortly. So um, here are some key figures uh, of our program. Uh, so it's 16 months. We have two intakes, one in September and one in January. On the left, you can kind of see a visual of uh, where our class of 2020 is coming from. So pretty much from all over the world. Um, our class size is under 300 students. Uh, our average GMAT score is 690, but keep in mind that this is just an average. Our students typically have around six years of work experience, but we have students uh, ranging from two to 10 years of experience. Uh, and the average age is 30, but again, that's just an average. We have students that um, range from 25 to 35 years old. Okay, so uh, here are some pictures of our lovely campus. So the first building that you see is our MBA building um, over there. And then the bottom two pictures, uh, you can see our chateau and also our huge campus, uh, which is around 340 acres. Uh, so it's really big and um, it's, it's really pretty. Here's a picture uh, of our students who uh, went to visit La Défense, which is the business district uh, of Paris. So uh, throughout the program, you'll be able to do MBA treks and visit uh, top companies. And so we'll be discussing that um, in a bit. So how does our curriculum uh, look like? So as I mentioned before, uh, it's 16 months and there's kind of two phases, the fundamental phase and the customized phase. So in the first eight months, uh, you'll be studying kind of all the essentials uh, of the business world. Uh, after that, you'll further develop your expertise in the field that you're interested in. So in the customized phase, you'll be taking electives, you'll have the opportunity to do uh, an exchange abroad if you wanted to, uh, you can do an MBA project uh, with the company, uh, and then you would choose a specialization. Uh, sometimes we have people ask us, you know, what if we're interested in two things or two subjects, uh, that's perfectly fine. You can do a specialization in one subject and then um, take electives in another subject or even do a certificate in another subject as well. So it's definitely possible. Okay, so we're gonna go uh, right to it. So Arnaud, Juan, thank you again uh, for joining us today and, and sharing your insights. So uh, both Arnaud and Juan are doing uh, the finance specialization and I think pretty much almost done. Uh, and so they're kind of gonna share their experience uh, with you today. So maybe we can start off guys by, you know, you mentioning where you're from um, and what's your background. Whoever wants to start first. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So my name is Juan Borges. Uh, I'm from Colombia. Um, before the MBA, I was working in, in finance. I did uh, trading of fixed income uh, for four years. And then I changed to uh, project finance, which I did for a year before coming here. Uh, I chose HSC because I wanted to explore international opportunities, particularly in Europe. And I wanted to explore something uh, uh, outside finance too, like uh, consulting and tech, but uh, right now I'm definitely going to work um, in finance, probably in private equity. Thank you. Thank you. On my side, I'm from, I'm from Switzerland. I have been doing some commodity trading in London, Hong Kong and Singapore. I did that uh, for a little less than, than two years. Then I moved for a slightly more entrepreneurial experience in Madagascar, where I became the CEO of a company that is producing bottles of water. Uh, and uh, I, I did that with a private equity firm at the back that was backing the, the business at the time. We multiplied the revenue by seven. And, uh, and at some point, actually, our factory was, was working 24 hours per day, uh, seven days per week. 
And uh, I just decided, okay, it's time for me. I'm not growing anymore. I'm not, I'm not learning anything else. And uh, so it's time for me to go back uh, for an MBA. And uh, yeah, that, that's what I wanted to do. On the side, I did also the three level of the CFA before the, the, the MBA, but I never really exercised into asset management. So that's why I decided to, to go for the, for the specialization in finance. So can you guys kind of mention, you know, how the program is going so far for both of you? So Juan, maybe if you want to start. Yeah, perfect. So uh, the program, I'm almost finished. Uh, we've been here for 60 months. Uh, the first uh, two terms were the core part. Um, it was a basics of business and a bit of more than basics because we have too many discussions with experienced people. So, so it was very nice. Uh, outside the classroom, we had um, speaker events. We have had uh, extracurricular events such as MBAT. Um, so, so we pretty much have covered a lot during one year. Uh, when you come on to an MBA, you won't have time like to just focus on academics, extracurricular, and then uh, networking, which is a big part of an MBA. So yeah, it's been a, been a busy and a joyful year. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's very you. enjoyable, the MBA. And uh, also, you, you have to know that when you are joining the MBA of, of HEC, you can really trigger a lot of different opportunities. On my side, for example, by joining the MBA uh, at HEC, I had the, the chance to, to interview Reed Hastings, who is the founder and, and actual CEO of uh, Netflix. I was also invited, thanks to, my, to, to the HEC label that I have right now with you know, my profile, I was invited to the World Economic Forum. Uh, in Africa, uh, in Cape Town in 2019, um, to, to, to be as a, to, to, to talk a little bit about the business and how do you drive a business that is for me, the balls of water into a more sustainable kind of, of industry. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very enjoyable. You are learning a lot. You are also meeting some, some friends for life. And uh, on top of it, you know that these friends will be in business and they get to have good positions. So it's good to have them on on your side and you also have like great great discussions with all your your classmates so it's uh, overall it's a it's a great 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 opportunity mm -hmm. right. well thanks guys thanks for sharing that uh so now we'll kind of dig into the specialization um, maybe maybe why i choose mba as well i just to add very quickly to this to this point sure i, I was uh, i was uh, admitted to uh insead and hec However, if you want to work in France, you have to know that the brand of HEC is much stronger than INSEAD. Nobody knows about INSEAD, everybody knows about HEC. And uh, also in terms of history, HEC has a really long history into the French uh, in, the, in, in Europe when it's, uh, INSEAD is slightly newer. And uh, INSEAD, uh, uh, HEC is really giving you such a strong credibility all around Europe. And also I was, I did my exchange at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. And uh, actually I was really surprised to see that the HEC brand is, is quite powerful uh, in the US as well. And you also have to rely with HEC, you have such a great network of people. You have the CEO of, uh, of L'Oreal is coming from HEC. You have the former president of France, uh, Francois Hollande is coming from HEC. Uh, you have, such a huge amount of CEO all around the world of, of top companies that is coming from this school. And um, yeah, we also have a, a really famous CEO uh, from, the, from, from one of the biggest company in the US with also from the MBA of HEC. So, so it's giving you access to a lot of different people and these people are coming on campus to talk to the students. So it's, uh, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're very proud to announce that, uh, you know, this year we're ranked in the top 10 uh, global MBA uh, according to the Financial Times ranking. And so we're very proud uh, of that ranking. Okay, so uh, thanks, Arnaud. So now, you know, maybe you can kind of share why you chose the finance specialization in particular. I know that both of you kind of come from finance backgrounds, but, um, you know, what were you looking for and what were you expecting and, and why did you choose the specialization? Um, okay, so to start, uh, so I chose the finance specialization because I wanted to to fill some gaps I had in finance. Uh, 
and I wanted to uh, strengthen my profile for um, their consulting or PE. So I, I saw the syllabus, uh, I was between strategy and consult and uh, finance. I, I saw the syllabus on the classes and there were a few classes that particularly interested me in finance. So mm -hmm. that's why I chose, I chose the specialization. Because I mean, I'm sure there's, there's it's, finance is not just covering one topic. There's many different areas, sub areas within finance. And so, yeah, yeah, definitely. I even learned about the structured finance, which was uh, impressive to me because mm -hmm. I didn't know that, that much. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah it, it was a, a pretty good experience. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, on, okay. on my side, it was, uh, I did the three level of the CFA before the, doing this, uh, before studying the MBA, but I wanted to, but I ne never really worked into corporate finance into, as, as one mentioned, uh, the, the uh, structured finance was really for me like completely new. And that's something that is really, that is used really, really widely right now. So uh, I, I did a lot of theory in finance, but with the specialization uh, of finance at HEC, you are not really meeting a, a big, I, I would say 60% of the professors, in fact, are not uh, prof full-time professors. They are professors, but they have a full-time job on the side. They work at Goldman Sachs, at the Société Générale. They have their own boutique uh, uh, M&A firm. So in fact, they are giving you not cases, how about business cases that you could find by, by yourself, they're really giving you cases on which they work. And that's definitely something that is, that is uh, much more interesting because they give you all the little tips of all this, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the case uh, on which they worked. So um, it's, it's giving you a much more practical experience than what, what I was used to, to see in my books of, uh, uh, in, in, during the CFA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. And that's, uh, you know, just in general, we like to uh, apply in class also skills, but also out of class uh, as well. And we'll kind of talk about the different ways that you can kind of uh, expose yourself to uh, finance uh, shortly later. Uh, but maybe you guys can also discuss what about some, you know, what are some examples of the classes you took? Maybe there was a particular uh, business case or project uh, that you worked on that you found, you know, really interesting. Uh, okay. Yeah, so for example, in my case, I had uh, two classes that I found particularly interesting. One was the structured finance that we were talking about. And there we learned all about uh, syndicated um, loans. And, no, sorry, not syndicated loans, but um, secu securitization. So CLOs, CDOs, and so from, from the point that the loans are issued to the point that they're sell, sold to investors, uh, we learned all about that. We did a business case. It took like three weeks, I think, in structured finance. Um, it was very insightful. And uh, another case, another class that was uh, really remarkable was the M&A for legal legal stuff. It was with an M&A lawyer from AXA Investment Managers. Um, and to be honest, I worked uh, for, I did an internship in M&A, but I didn't learn as, I mean, it was a short internship, a summer internship, but I didn't learn much about the legal side, which for me was very interesting and think is, is very useful in the, in the future. Thanks. Arnaud? Yeah, definitely. Uh, on, on my side, that was particularly interesting as well, as I, as I took over the management of a distressed company in Madagascar, but it was pretty small business. Uh, then uh, I saw that, in fact, uh, uh, all professors were working as well on distress companies, but here in Europe and much bigger companies. And uh, they gave us, for example, this, this example of, uh, of uh, um, flower companies that was really struggling in France. And, the, and, and Professor Leglon was, was working on this case. And he explained to us, always oh, saved the company, how some, some uh, private equity firm took cover the business and made... Uh, a, a huge turnaround that ultimately sold it for, for, for massive profit. And it was, that was really exciting actually to, to, to see uh, how you are doing big things here in Europe. And actually it's not that different from what I did before, except that you need to be uh, on the legal side, you need to be much stronger than, you, than I was in Madagascar. And just to come back on the point of Juan regarding uh, the M&A class where we focused a lot on, on the legal aspect, 
uh, I think the CPs right now, we're going to see a lot of CPs. That's where you are actually making money and making a deal profitable is through the CPs, not, not through all the things that you're going to negotiate at some point. You can have a li- value rule price, but if you have some CPs that are, that, are, that, are, that are really not in your favor, then at the end of the day, you're going to lose some money on the deal. So it was really insightful. And as I said before, it's, it's really finance professional that are teaching you. You also have professors from HEC. Most of them are really good. Uh, but the professionals is just so insightful that uh, you're going to learn a lot. And just something to keep in mind is also that our finance department is, is, is ranked in really the top five. We have amazing uh, finance uh, professors, even in the master program as well, as well as the MBA. Um, yeah, our, you know, our finance department is doing really well. Yeah, um, yeah just, just to add on this point, I was at the University of Chicago, which is the school where you have Milton Friedman coming from, Eugène Fama. So most, some of the most well-known uh, economists of the world but I was so surprised to see that actually some professors uh, of HEC were um, had ex, um, were uh, were um, quoted during the class. So that was that was really impressive, and I was really proud of coming from this school mm-hmm. when I saw that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Next, um, you know, are there any other ways for students who are interested at finance to learn more about it or to practice it more at uh, Ashrasi? So I know, Juan, you, um, you organize an uh, MBA track for finance companies in London, but uh, maybe you can start off by answering this question. Uh, so, yeah, the, the MBA, apart from the academics, uh, you have the opportunity to uh, get involved in clubs. I was involved in the in the club of, in the finance club, which uh, was very close to the private equity club. Um, so we had two, during the last year, we had uh, two tracks. So the first was in Switzerland, uh, visiting mainly private equity companies. And the second one in October was in London, in which uh, we visited uh, the BlackRock, AXA investment managers, uh, Bank of America, Stepstone, PR, EQT, uh, CBC, Silver Lake, and a few more, a few more companies in, in about a week. It was like the whole day visiting two or three companies, uh, talking to them and networking. Uh, it was great. Uh, some people got interviews from those meetings. Um, so, so you really get more involved with the professionals. Also from the clubs, we got, we invited speakers. So there were people from Green Hill and Bain Capital, from the consulting firms too, uh, from Ardian, many, many big firms uh, coming to, to as you say, invited by students, uh, which ma- makes it like uh, better for you if, you if you're involved in terms of networking and yeah, and learning. Okay. And I'm sure also, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, please, Patrick, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and also, I just think that uh, in terms of uh, also with the alumni coming from uh, that are currently working in finance sectors coming to campus, uh, you know, and kind of giving their insight on how to enter that particular um, field and how to become experts in finance. I'm sure that was also, uh, you know, very helpful. That is true. That, that helps a lot because um, many people from these hedge funds, private equity firms, banks, don't reply to you unless you have like some sort of link. Mm-hmm. And the HSA network uh, helps in this case a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially here in France. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Arnaud. Yeah. Um, also, what, what, I, what I want to mention is that right now with the, with the, with the crisis, it's, it's kind of really exciting time on the stock market. And uh, I'm spending a lot of time with my HEC friends, just ch- checking at the end of the day, what has been the news to today? What should we trade? And uh, this is really exciting as well. And that's really uh, adding to your, to your finance, finance experience. I, I also want to mention that maybe a good idea would be if you really want to go into finance and maybe more into asset management, private equity, or uh, investment banking, it might be a good idea to to, to go for, for the CFA at least level, level one during your time uh, at HEC. It's a lot of work. It's going to be really tough. But some people, re- the, the tough one, you know, the really motivated one, we don't want to spend a lot of time uh, at parties and stuff like that. 
they are doing the CFA at the same time. And if you are doing this, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna increase your chances of having interviews with top firms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also uh, another thing to add to that is that, you know, we have something called the MBAT at HSC, which is, uh, you know, kind of like an MBA Olympics that we host every year. Uh, and it's actually fully student run. So as part of the organizing committee, you can actually be in charge of the budget and the financing. Uh, and so I think last year, the budget was half a million euros. And so uh, it's a really, really big event. And so you also have opportunities like that um, to kind of practice and also get exposure um, to, to finance. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of already discussed the second question, um, you know, regarding the alumni network, but, you know, how do you think that the learnings from, you know, doing the specialization in finance uh, will help you in your future careers and how? Um, well, during my specialization and some electives I took uh, afterwards, uh, I've strengthened a lot my profile for private equity, particularly, which is uh, my main interest. Um, so I think, yeah, for example, my interviews on uh, normal processes, I, I'm ready. Uh, actually, I have an interview this week. And um, uh, especially for the technical part, then uh, at the job, you will learn even more. But, but I think uh, it gives a good foundation for, for jobs in M&A, PE, even asset management. Yeah, I think it's giving you also uh, the perspective that you have to negotiate and you have to, to, to use the numbers at your advantage. And that's something I, I was thinking before the MBA that a number was good or bad, but a, a, a number can be good or bad. If, like if you are on one side, you're going to use this number for a different, for, for, to achieve something. And that's something, actually something that the, the, the professional in finance, I don't know if it's only in France, but we also had uh, international people. They are always using the number at their interest. And that's something. So when you see someone using a number and seeing, okay, like, I'm, I'm not really sure of what he's doing, it, it might try to, to, to trick you. So you have to be careful. So in, in the negotiation process. So for me, it's going to be, I'm moving into asset management right now. But uh, if I have to negotiate some deals at some point with some companies, uh, I would be. I will remember all this. This. Uh, this thing that I learned during the uh, the specialization in finance. Mm -hmm. And you know, like Arnaud, you were mentioning before. Uh, you know, a lot of our professors aren't just teaching finance. They also have their own uh, companies, their own jobs that they're working on. So it's not just um, theory being discussed in class. Yeah. Uh, it's real life examples, uh, and not just anyone's. You know. Harvard business uh, case that you can find yeah. online, but it's, you know, really personal um, cases that they are currently dealing with or that they've mm -hmm. dealt with in the past. And so, you know, that can really deepen your knowledge of finance and also give you some practical examples, um, you know, for you to kind of learn um, and know how other companies handle these kind of situations. Yeah. And it's super high level because a professor at HEC have been selected. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's really tough to be, and it's really prestigious to, to hold a chair here at, at HEC. So, so they are working on the best deals, on the biggest deal. And uh, definitely they are, not, they, they are just, they are just some really influential in the world of finance, not only in France, but also in Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, I mean, I think also with the students as well, um, you know, you have students coming uh, from finance backgrounds that also share their experiences in the past working uh, in finance roles uh, that will also be beneficial for you, um, you know, in the future, mm -hmm. because maybe you want to work in a certain company, maybe that student or your classmate worked in that company or knew someone that worked in that company. So, um, you know, it would really help you as well uh, in that way. Definitely. Okay, so um, just to wrap up, so do you recommend the specialization and if yes, to who? Um, okay, yeah, I would recommend this specialization for anyone interested in financing the fields of investment banking, private equity, leverage finance, syndicate finance, hedge funds, asset management, uh, venture capital, and even to people outside finance, uh, such as consulting, um, MBV, or, or the more specialized uh, restructuring funds. Uh, many people from our batch um, got into into consulting. 
actually I think it was the specialization that got most people into consulting then. So, so it's not really for people that want to work in finance, but also also outside, even in the corporate corporate world, there's so always you need to understand finance uh, if you're in a management position. So, so it's a good it's a good specialization and and yeah, it's for people interested in those fields. Yeah. Yeah. On my side, I would also recommend the specialization. Uh, as I said before, if you want to move into finance, definitely go for it. But uh, you have to be careful. You, you have also to push by yourself. As I said, the CFA is a great asset to have. Then you're going to have to, to spend a lot of time studying for your interviews because the interviews are very specific, especially for investment banking or private equity. Uh, but I think it's also where you're going to, if you are managing the money at some point, you are probably one of the most powerful uh, person in an organization because people like a project with no money is a, is a project that's going to probably die. So, so it, even though you maybe want to move into consulting or to uh, luxury or these kind of things, you have to come back to the idea that if you have a project or something brilliant to bring to the table, but nobody is giving you any money because you cannot talk properly to finance people to convince them to, 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 to go ahead with your project, then that's probably going to fall down. So me, I would recommend this position to anyone who wants to continue in business, but uh, that's probably, I, I'm going maybe a little bit too far <laughs> in this kind of stuff. <laughs> Uh -huh. And just to add to what you're saying, um, you know, I, I think also it's, it's not necessary that you completely come from a finance background to do a finance specialization. Uh, you could be someone that's just, you know, really interested in finance and, and wants to learn more about it. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of students that didn't necessarily come from finance backgrounds and who end up doing the finance specialization. Yeah, so I think what, it's, what is interesting as well is that we saw that a lot of people who have been taken into MBBs are coming from the finance specialization. We have the highest rate, you know, finance specialization of people going to McKinsey, Bain, BCG, or into private equity firms. So it's, I, I don't know if it's, uh, from where is it coming from, but that is a fact that we saw during uh, this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, just another thing is that, you know, at Asher City, we really like to focus on career transformation. Uh, and so, you know, uh, whether you're wanting to change your location or the sector or the function, uh, we really kind of support students to do this. Uh, we have a day supported just for career planning where you can kind of discuss because I think it's really smart as well before choosing a specialization to talk with other or the second year students, um, talk with other people, the career advisor to see, you know, does this fit with your personal and professional goals? Um, and so I already see one question. We're going to get to the questions very quickly. Um, but maybe one last uh, question is, you know, do you have any tips or advice for prospective students uh, who want to join Ashwasi? Uh, yes. If you want to join finance consulting, you start networking. Even, I mean, the moment you get admitted to an MBA, um, because you won't have time once you come to an MBA to to do everything. So and networking is a big part of getting the, the job you want afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I think one, one part of the, of the networking is to really be involved in, in many different things in, in student clubs, um, you know, w with companies when they come visit. Uh, I think that also plays a big part of it, right, Juan? Yeah, that's key. Talk to a lot of people, talk to experts in different fields and, and try to get the right contact to to, to push your CV, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Arno, do you have anything yeah, to it's add? A, it's a hard, it's a hard industry to get in, especially if you don't have a, a background in finance. So you really have to come to this MBA and be extremely motivated and to push as hard as you can. And you don't have time to relax. So the time you like, at the time you will be admitted, if you have a specific goal, I don't know if, it, if it's to join an m a uh, firm or uh, private equity or asset management, for example, in Switzerland, you have to work on your dream and you, you have to work super hard because uh, it's not an industry where people are, are, are willing to take you if they didn't see that you make a, a huge effort. 
Well, no, thank you guys so much for, for that um, amazing insight and also for those tips. Um, just one more thing before we start answering uh, questions is that one thing that you guys can do uh, as a next step is you can kind of connect with us on our, um, if you go to our uh, website, we have a connect with us option where we can actually give you feedback on your profile uh, and kind of, you know, give you some advice as to, um, you know, how to apply in the application process, et cetera. So uh, I encourage you to do that. And now uh, we'll go ahead and start answering questions. So if you can please ask all your questions in the Q&A box and not in the chat box, please. Um, so we have a question asking about uh, what are the typical positions you may apply for after the specialization in finance? Uh, okay, so uh, positions you may apply for this time for MBA students are in, in large private equity firms, you can, you can apply. Um, bullish uh, black uh, banks, you can apply for investment banking positions, particularly m and um, for those jobs, you might not need uh, experience in finance. And then if you have a financial background, it opens up uh, to um, leverage finance, um, asset management, and, and in small private equity funds. Mm -hmm. the, the difference between having and not having a financial background is that uh, large firms can help you, uh, can, can train you but small firms cannot afford to train you. So if you, for example, a, a small PE fund won't, uh, probably won't hire somebody that doesn't know how to, how, how to do a model or does it have a deal experience. Mm -hmm. However, a, a large fund can, can hire you if you, if you show them uh, you have the right skills. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank Arnaud, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, not really. As I said, maybe you can catch up with your with, with your background in finance if you go for the CFA. So you don't just don't have to to lay down and relax and say, okay, I don't have a background in finance. If you if you do your CFA at the same time, I think people will see that you are extremely motivated. Okay. Um, so we have a question asking uh, about. Um, could you please share internship statistics for the finance specialization? So uh, if you'd like, we can share our employment report with you. That'll have the statistics of, you know, um, what concentrations our students are going into uh, once they graduate and also the, the companies that recruited. Um, so if you want, uh, please connect with us, uh, you know, the page that I showed you before, and then uh, we can send that to you uh, and give you more information about that. Yeah. I can I can say something. Many I, I don't know the exact stats, but um, multi, many people went to uh, PE and VC. VC hire a lot of MBAs and do, and, and they do internships mm -hmm. for us. Okay, yeah. Um, so let's see the other questions. Uh, so, what kind of resources can the Ashwese MBA offer uh, for someone willing to work in the sustainable finance field? Okay, so maybe I will go ahead because I, I'm going to work as an impact investment manager for a bank here in Switzerland. Uh, uh, you, have, you have the Impact Club. Uh, you will be in touch with some of the, uh, of the most well-known uh, fund uh, such as uh, Blue Orchard, Symbiotics, uh, Responsibility here in Switzerland. The, and Switzerland is really ahead in terms of sustainable finance. And then you're going to also have like some position. It depends actually for Credit, credit Suisse, UBS, uh, even Morgan Stanley, Citigroup. These, these kind of banks, sometimes they will hire, sometimes they will not hire. And you have to, say, to see as well that if sustainable finance right now is a really hot topic. So banks are receiving mo much more CV for uh, impact or, or sustainability finance than for M&A. So it's really competitive. You have to network really heavily. And um, if you do that, then you, you, you will probably land into a good job. If you don't and you step back and relax, then you won't. But just to, HEC is definitely giving you the tools to, to, to achieve whatever goal you have into this field. And also, uh, if, if I'm speaking about Switzerland, but 
Responsibility is one of the largest um, micro credit slash impact fund here. And you, and one of the, the most senior executives of the fund is from the HEC MBA. So that's, that's already a really good connection to have. Uh, and, thanks, and it's not, not, not only here in, in, in Switzerland, but it's all around Europe. If not, uh, it's also maybe in the US, but sustainable finance is not really, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of pretty, it's still pretty niche actually for the US. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, thanks, uh, Arnaud, for answering that. Um, we have a question about, because both of you are coming from the January intake, um, is it possible to do the finance specialization and also do a double degree with other schools? So a, maybe if you guys didn't do that, do you know anyone in your class uh, that kind of did a double degree uh, while doing yeah. the finance specialization? Yeah, the thing is, uh, I think it's, it's not possible. You can do an exchange, but not the double degree uh, because for the double degree, you have to do the core part and then, and then go to NYU or yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but for example, Arno, I mean, you can tell the experience he went for for booth in the yeah. last term. So. Yeah, what what I did is that I did two specializations in finance. One at HCC that was much more kind of corporate finance, and then I took only classes in finance at booth at Chicago booth at University of Chicago booth. Uh, so it gave me like the French, the European perspective, the Euro the American perspective, and the first part. And, and I would say at Chicago Booth, it was much more into asset management because I knew that I would work in this field. Uh, so it, it's, uh, I would say that the MBA at HEC has one great advantage is that it's really flexible and you can really tailor it to, to, your, to, your, to your well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a question for Juan. Um, as a non-native, you know, why did you choose to go to Europe to do your MBA versus um, the US, for example? Uh, okay, so uh, I chose Europe over the US, um, particularly because I, I wanted to stay um, in Europe. Uh, I lived in the UK for five years before, uh, so I was kind of attached to. Uh, Juan, I think uh, it's. Ring. Juan. So maybe uh, it's, he's having some connection issues. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we'll, it's a question I cannot really answer to this one. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> uh, we'll come back to this, that question once Juan uh, gets back with us. But maybe Arnaud, you can answer um, the question yeah, about... Uh, he's back. Okay, Juan, sorry. Can you just repeat that last part? Because uh, it kind of froze. There was some connection issues. Okay. Uh, so yeah, and after 16 months, I think it, it was the right decision. Well, I don't know now in terms of employability because of all this COVID, but anyway, I, I don't regret taking the MBA. And it certainly has open opportunities here in Europe and even in the Middle East, which I'm open to as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, the next question is, you know, are there any noticeable differences between January and September intake for the finance specializations? as far as internships and, and post MBA careers. So maybe you guys um, um, can, yeah. Yeah, this, uh, for people that want to apply to internships in both Bank, banks, in Goldman Sachs, uh, Morgan Stanley, and JP Morgan, Barclays, they usually have the deadlines um, before this uh, is not helpful for ja the January intake. We have raised this concern to school, so I think they're working on that. Uh, but th this is, um, this is a chance for the September intake to apply to those jobs um, when they are here on campus. So, so that makes a difference, particularly if you want to work in these banks in the long term. The only way to enter is to, through the internship. Mm -hmm. So and also that, that might be something you could think. Uh-huh. And just to add to that, to just show you uh, back to the curriculum that, um, you know, depending on whether you start in January or September, term three and four, like say if you start in January, then term four and three are actually um, switched. 
And so you would choose your specialization uh, first and then uh, do electives and uh, internship and, and all that. Okay, so uh, we have another question. Any tips for non-EU students wanting to stay back in Europe after the MBA um, and to work in finance? So again, Juan, I guess it's a question for you. Uh, Juan? So I think he's, <laughs> he's having some, right. con yeah, yeah, Juan, yeah. can back. you hear us? Yeah, you're back. Okay, great. So do you have any tips for non-EU students wanting to stay back in Europe, uh, post MBA and work in finance? Uh, yes. First, um, apply to large uh, firms because they're more willing to, to sponsor you than small firms. And then like again, start networking. Large firms, if you, if you get into the process, if you, they like you, they will sponsor with, and it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. But during the interview stop, so you need to, to speak to them, talk to them a lot way before applying. So you have to create the relationship with people inside the, the large firms. These being PE funds or, or investment banks or, or asset management firms in order to, for them to sponsor you. It shouldn't be an issue for them to sponsor you as long as you, they like you. Mm -hmm. And also just to add to that um, is that uh, as a non-EU student, you have the option after graduating to apply for an APS, which is a one-year work visa. Uh, and then afterwards you have the option to apply for a passeport talent, which is valid for four years. Uh, and so I think France is much more flexible in terms of um, getting work visas compared to other countries, um, such as in, in North America. Uh, if you're coming to France or if you're going to Germany or Spain, if you want to work in these countries, you have to learn the language, the local language to work in, in a finance job. I think it also, it's, so it also depends on how much of your job requires um, interacting with clients. So I think that all client facing roles in finance, like the financial consulting, for example, you will definitely no, need to know French. Um, but I think that others, uh, like auditing, for example, financial auditing, I know that I have some friends that uh, don't speak French and they were able to get jobs in that because they're not really speaking with clients. So I also think it depends, ex you know, in what you're interested in. But, you know, it's definitely important to learn the language of the country that you're going to be living in. Uh, yeah, and so just, this is... Just to add up on, on this one, here in Switzerland, you can, you, there is plenty of people who don't know any, any word of German or French but they, 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 are, they are living their entire life here. So it, you can have some opportunities, but again, as Juan said, it's definitely, um, you have to network and you need to find uh, some people that are gonna support your candidacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for example, I got, uh, I mean, I'm in a process uh, with partners group in, in, in Switzerland and I don't speak uh, German, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm. Yeah, and just to let you know, like, you know, and I should say we, we provide language courses for you, uh, for students that are free. So if you want to, like, let's say, learn French, we also have other languages like German um, that you can learn uh, while you're on campus. Uh, so that's also an option. Ricardo, I see your questions. Um, I will be sending a follow-up email, uh, so don't worry. For any questions that we, we haven't, didn't have time to answer in detail, uh, I'll send a follow-up email. So don't worry about that, uh, Ricardo. Uh, we have a specific question from uh, Balakrishnan. So that's something that I, I encourage you to ask to one of my colleagues after you connect with us. Um, we can answer a question uh, such as the one that you asked. Um, we have one question here. We'll probably do two or three more and then um, you know, we'll, we'll end the presentation. But uh, on the CEFR level, what would employers be looking at when it comes to French? Do, would any of you happen to know Arnaud or Juan? Mm, not, not sure, but you know, I think you need, you need at least conversational French. You need at least C1 or, or C2. To, mm -hmm. to work in France, if you're, as Patrick said, said um, uh, talking to clients and you need at least C C1 or C2. Yeah, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, if you don't have a C1 or C2 in France, it, your, your life will be pretty tough after HEC. So if you really want to, to settle down here in France, you, you, you need to, to work on your French already right now. 
especially if you want to immerse yourself and and yeah. you know to fully immerse yourself in the new environment uh, that you're going to be in. Yeah, um, in the French. Exactly, and and just imagine that uh, you know at the in the companies here, all the afterworks or uh, you know the networking events, a lot of those will be in their local language. Mm -hmm. So if you do speak French, it's it's a big advantage uh, for you. Within, I would say just to within the HEC community, everybody will speak English and pretty pretty perfectly. Uh, so it's not really tough to network with some people from the from the network. However, if you really want to immerse yourself and you really want to to work here in France, it's going to be tough if you don't have the C1 or C2 level. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, that's, that's also for, it depends also on what you're interested in. Uh, as I said, some fields require less French than others, but yeah, it's always better to, to speak the, the local language. Uh, we have time maybe for one more question. So, um, if you guys want to ask, please feel free to do so in the Q and A box. Um, if not, then I'll be sending a follow-up email where you can ask further questions that you might think of later. So does anyone have any Last questions. Okay, I don't think so. Um, so we're gonna wrap it up then. Uh, thank you everyone. Oh, wait, do we get a question? Uh, okay, so there's one that I can answer. Again, for non-EU students, how many stay back in France? So that's something that you can find in our employment reports. Uh, I think Afterwards, around 30% or 28% are staying, the class of 2019 stayed in France uh, specifically. 66% uh, found jobs outside of their home country. Just to get, give you an idea, but that's, you can find more info about that uh, on our employment reports. Okay, so I think uh, that's all uh, the time that we have um, today. Um, Rajiv, yes, we can share the video. I'll be send. I can send it, uh, the webinar recording uh, to you if you'd like. So um, thank you everyone for joining us on your on our webinar today. Hopefully this was um, you know a bit helpful for you guys to kind of understand our finance specialization uh, and our MBA program. Um, and yeah, thank you Arno and Juan again for for joining us today and, and for all the help that you you gave today. And uh, we hope to see everyone on campus soon. Uh, good luck. Uh, stay safe, and uh, hope to see you soon. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.